I got so mad that I decided to write a book just as catharsis to get it out. And I was mad about a really simple thing. Well, everything in my life is very simple because I'm a talk show host. I'm not an intellectual. I'm not a particularly deep thinker. I'm actually fairly shallow, which has served me well, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm not joking. Um, so I was mad about a very simple thing. It had nothing to do with quantum physics, do you know what I mean, or decoding the human genome. It really was the most obvious of all questions, and what infuriated me, and does even now, thinking about it, was the fact that it was never publicly asked or debated. And the question, of course, was, why did Donald Trump just become the president? Yeah, because that was something nobody expected. And when I say nobody, I mean nobody. Not the Republicans, not the Democrats, not Trump's staff, nobody. Not one person called that. And by the way, let me just say, I'll just be blunt. As a Christian, I do believe in forgiveness and redemption, and I believe in being honest about the limits of human power and human wisdom and decision-making. We screw it up a lot, I certainly do. By the way, because of YouTube, you can see my screw-ups. <laughs> I always deny that I was in Dancing with the Stars, but I actually was, okay? So I don't judge, I don't. But here's the difference. I never went on Dancing with the Stars again. When I learned this, I, I wrote the book. In 2015, the middle class in this country became a minority. This is not only a major development, it's a pivot point in the history of the country. You can't have a functioning democracy, or by the way, a functioning market economy, without a robust middle class that comprises the majority of your country, period. And by robust, I mean really simple, self-supporting, not dependent upon government, living cheerfully, by and large, with the hope of doing better and with the near certainty that their kids could do better if they apply themselves. It's, it's, it's not a hard definition, it's a common sense one. And for my entire life, in fact, for the entire life of our country that we can measure, that has been the majority of our country. And in 2015, it became a minority. I have no idea what Space Force is, but I love it. I literally have no idea. I'm not sure they do actually know what it is either, but I can say that if my son, who's 21, called me as a senior in college and said, you know what, I thought I was going into, you know, whatever, private equity, but I think I'm joining Space Force. <laughs> I would be so, my first question would be, what's the uniform like? The second question would be, <laughs> the second thing I would say is, I'm so proud of you, boy. <laughs> Intelligence is not the same as wisdom. Wisdom can't exist without self-awareness. As my father always used to say when I was little, the root of all wisdom is knowing how, he actually used a bad word, which I won't repeat, but is knowing how flawed you are. It's true. That's the point where you become wise, when you realize how screwed up you are, when you realize the limits of your own power. Then everything falls into perspective. For people like us, the point of politics is utilitarian. Like you vote for someone in order that like whoever's in power back off enough that you can have a happy family or a successful business or go to church, whatever church you want. You know, just like to make room for the things that actually matter, which are not politics. Okay, that's the whole point from our perspective of the system is to give us enough freedom to do our thing. What you are practicing is politics. What they are practicing is theology. That's, that's an evangelical faith, faith without a God. It's a secular religion, but it's a religion nonetheless. It's a religion that forces others to convert or suffer. That's exactly what it is. And that's why the emotional temperature is so high, unsustainably high. Talk to a young person, you may be one of them, probably are, who is not with the program, doesn't need to be a right winger or whatever, doesn't, but not with the program, you know what the program is, what we're all required to believe, all the lies that we're required by law to tell all day long. So let's say you don't believe that, and you're 22 and you're in a college. You have decided that you're thinking for yourself. That is a radical act in the current moment, okay? And you're getting all of your information from like-minded people on the internet. And it really is like a religious awakening. Talk to some of these kids. I know you know what I'm talking about if you've just been in college. Like you're reading stuff, you're like, wait, everything they're telling me is a total lie. Because it is. That is happening across this country. Once you start to realize the amount of dishonesty out there, 
Like it's over, they can't control you again. They can't control your brain, which is exactly what they're trying to do. We can control people's behavior. Societies are allowed to do that. You can't sleep in a crosswalk, not allowed. But we've never tried to control people's minds because that's the definition of totalitarianism. That's now what we're trying to do. Why are we trying to do that? Because the people in charge realize that the free exchange of information online makes it actually impossible for them to control what people think.